2022 Aston Martin Vantage F1 Edition Review, Tweaking the Formula. But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. With the current popularity of Formula One in the US, fueled in part by the hit Netflix show Drive to Survive, it would be easy for Aston Martin to slap F1 badges onto a road-going Vantage and call it a special trim. But there's way more to the 2021 Vantage F1 edition than meets the eye. While this model definitely stands out over the base coupe with its racy bodywork and matte paint job, Aston also upgraded the engine, suspension, and transmission to make it feel sharper. After some time behind the wheel, it's obvious that this car is worthy of its performance badging and its $162,000 price tag. The Aston Martin Vantage is a handsome vehicle, with an athletic stance and crisp angles that give it archetypical sports car proportions. Signature Aston design elements ensure that it doesn't look overly generic, too. Other editors have criticized the Vantage's mesh-mouth grille, and that's understandable. But visual tweaks to the F1 edition help alleviate most of those gaping front-end qualities. Horizontal strakes lessen the impact of the Vantage's black hole-like front fascia, while the removal of the protruding grille surround results in a cleaner, simpler front end. The ridiculous 20-spoke, 20 21-inch 20 wheels are exclusive to this Model 2, and might be the best of the Vantage bunch, while F1 edition badges dot the exterior and a daunting wing lives on the trunk lid. And if you can get the car up to its 195 mile per hour top speed, that wing adds an extra 440 pounds of downforce. The lovely Aston Martin Racing Green Paint is an F1 special, available in both gloss and satin finishes, paired with dark grey accents that stretch all the way from the hood to the trunk lid. Our tester, with the latter satin finish, looked absolutely stunning in any light. But you can also get this model in lunar white and jet black if you're feeling a bit boring. The basic layout doesn't stray far from the general Vantage formula, which includes crystallized buttons for the shifter and twin air vents beneath an 8.0-inch screen. But at least this Aston gains a few features exclusive to F1 model, like additional Alcantara upholstery on the center console and door panels, new sport bucket seats with a neon central stripe, and neon-colored contrast stitching throughout. All of it helps the cabin feel more premium. The bucket seats in this car are sublime. They follow the contours of your body like a glove, and the mix of leather and extra Alcantara is a cozy combo that feels extra soft and of the highest quality. Adding Alcantara to the center console and door panels is a nice touch too, making for for a comfy place to rest your elbows. But as with many high-end sports cars, the Vantage has its drawbacks in the comfort department. This car is loud on the highway, with the rear wing giving off more wind noise, and because the rear springs are 10% stiffer than on the standard Vantage, the F1 edition is harsher around town than a comparable Porsche 911. That said, the Vantage isn't as backbreaking as you might think in the softest sports setting. The ride is pliable over imperfect pavement. Sport Plus and Track modes change that, stiffening up to reduce roll, but even with ultra-thin Pirelli P0 tires, 255-35ZR21 front and 295-30ZR21 rear, the Vantage is a fine daily driver. This is the one area where the Vantage falls short. Aston uses a comparably tiny 8.0-inch display running an outdated version of the Mercedes-Benz Command Infotainment System with poorly reskinned graphics, and it doesn't even offer Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. At least the click-wheel controller makes everything easy to navigate, considering the screen itself isn't touch-capable. But that's a small consolidation for an otherwise small display and an outdated interface. By comparison, the Porsche 911 Turbo offers a handsome 10.9-inch touchscreen display with gorgeous graphics and a concise setup. The Audi R8 does away with a central screen entirely, for example, opting for a streamlined layout entirely within the digital cluster that we much prefer. The Vantage's digital cluster is basic only offers a bit of configuration. The Vantage isn't class competitive here. Our tester also comes equipped with Aston Martin premium speakers, which boosts the overall audio experience. But it's a lofty $2,000 on its own compared to some other upgraded audio systems we've experienced that aren't as individually pricey. The Audi R8's Bang & Olufsen sound system, for example, outputs a better sound. Unlike some other styling packages, the F1 edition offers more than just good looks. Powering this model is a reworked version of the Vantage's Mercedes-AMG twin-turbocharged 4.0-liter V8. The output improves from 503 horsepower in the standard model to 528 here 
while torque stays put at 505 pound-feet. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.